1999 was a milestone for civil rights advocacy. Rabbi Bruce Kahn explains. The Fair Employment Council merged with the Fair Housing Council and also expanded its mission to include uh, public accommodations issues. And Jim Gibson became part of the merged board of those two organizations. Rabbi Khan was and is enthusiastic about serving on a board with Jim Gibson. When you want to get to the heart of things and you really want to understand uh, what's going on, why is it happening that way, what do you need to do to fix it, how do all the different constituents and stakeholders uh, fit together to make the change that you need in terms of policies and plans to bring about real and lasting change, change that is Jim Gibson. Kim Keenan, who had also been on the board of the Fair Employment Council, became part of the combined board. She discovered what a valuable contribution a man of faith can make to a civil rights organization. Having Monsignor Kaner on the board infuses us with a moral authority. When you have someone like Monsignor Kaner, it's about whether it's right. It's whether it's morally right. It's more about doing it because this is what should be done. Monsignor Kaner's moral authority has made a difference for thousands of people in need. And when I came to Washington, I would see all of the homeless people on the streets. And so I decided to try to do something about it. So we got a group together. We met at St. Aloysius Rectory. And we decided on the name Some So Others Mighty, which has become famous now. For 40 years, we haven't missed a day that we've provided meals. Some has also expanded now. We have a mental medical clinic, a dental clinic. We have a number of residences for permanent housing, transitional housing. One of Sum's transitional homes is the Caner House. One of my parishioners, when I was pastor at Our Lady of Victory at the time, had a heart attack while she was being forced out of her apartment by condominium conversion. His parishioner's crisis was the impetus for Victory Housing, which Father Caner founded in 1979. Our housing out there is worth well over $100 million. Washington has a severe affordable housing crisis. This crisis was made worse by landlords who violated district law and discriminated against people who needed to pay part of their rent with housing choice vouchers. When Rabbi Khan was serving as interim executive secretary of the Equal Rights Center, he asked Jim Gibson to join him in proposing a project to a funder. This individual said, I want you to know that you would not have gotten through the front door without Jim Gibson. The project that was funded made it possible to do extensive testing, which revealed that 60% of the landlords were discriminating against voucher holders. It also included successful enforcement efforts against 20 landlords and follow-up testing, which produced encouraging results. We went and studied a great many places and found a zero rate after first finding over a 60% rate. That was as a result of getting some assistance for a grant from a particular grantor that was received through Jim Gibson's direct intervention. And they would not have even discussed it with us without his presence. Ben Wilson is now the managing partner at Beverage and Diamond. Recently, he and his colleagues represented the Knights of St. John in Charles County. The Knights of St. John are similar to the Knights of Columbus and they've been around uh, for much of the uh, 20th century and um, and they um, and their story was compelling the story is that they uh, had a, a house there that they used for their social gatherings and it was a meeting place not only for the knights but uh, for others in the african-american community for years when i was in a senior in high school we used to do dances and one winter we had just been on the best behavior, did all our chores so we could go to a dance. To find out, my father worked for a state highway, and he called and said, y'all won't go to the dance on Saturday. He was like, why? He said, the roof just caved in. The building was condemned and demolished. Unfortunately, they were told by the county that they would not be allowed to um, uh, build there again. They would not be granted the appropriate permits to build. The Knights did not understand why. Others were getting permits to build on similar land nearby, and the Knights were getting offers from prospective buyers interested in their desirable location. 
we know in the law that it's hard to prove discriminatory intent. And this was a case where our view of the facts was that it would be difficult to do so. So we began approaching this case as we would any other environmental case upon, on behalf of a client that sought to develop uh, its land. We found uh, various exceptions that were available that would allow the state and the county to grant us the appropriate permits. He came out, met with us, talked about the case, met with the county commissioners, met with uh, the people in the health department, and tried to get them to agree to work out some solution for us. And in the final analysis, they did. So the Knights are now in a position where they will be able to uh, build this facility, a facility that will be used by the entire community. And we're very proud of that. We're very proud of what Ben Wilson and our other three champions of justice have accomplished. But as John Lewis reminds us, As long as we try to hold this republic together and create a more perfect union, there will be a need for legal organizations and groups to stand up and fight for civil rights and protect the civil rights of all of our citizens. Thank you.